Greetings everyone. In this video we will be taking a look at the gods of Path of Exile. There are many gods, some of them are more powerful than the others, but all of them play their part in our adventures. In my previous video I discussed the fall of the Eternal Empire and if you are interested in that topic you can click the link in the top right corner. Now without further ado, let's begin. Let's start this list with the gods of the most ancient civilization of Rayclas, the Val. Their pantheon was not as rich as some of the other peoples, but their gods play major roles in this world, even though the Val themselves are long gone. One of the Val gods was Ralikesh. It is known that Ralikesh was imprisoned in Gru's necklace, and after the beast was defeated, Ralikesh broke free of his imprisonment and possessed Grust. Since the Val culture is extremely old and most of the information about them is lost, it is unknown what this deity was supposed to represent. But given its nature and fighting style, it is possible that Ralikesh was some sort of a god of war or battle. Arakali, also known as the Mother of Spiders, is a powerful Val goddess that managed to trick Silk into releasing her. Silk was aware of her presence and even refers to her as his bride. Though the nature of their relationship is uncertain, Yina gives us a clue as to what is happening. Apparently, Arakali promised Silk great power and possibly even ascendancy to godhood, an offer he couldn't refuse. After tricking the exile into helping him, he finally awakens Arakali from her slumber to wreak havoc onto Rayclast. But even though she promised Silk great power, she captures and consumes him during her battle with the exile, making him another victim of wicked ambition. Even though we do not know what exactly this deity represents, her name and appearance tell us that she is a goddess of spiders. Since the spider webs are often associated with lies and deception, it is possible that Arakali was some sort of a goddess of lies. This theory holds even more ground after we see Arakali devouring Silk after tricking him into releasing her. But she's not the goddess of trickery, because this title belongs to another Baal deity. Tangmazu is a trickster god of Baal, whose sole existence is focused on him deriving pleasure from tricking and deceiving people and even other gods. He is Ralikesh's brother, and it is rumored that he used his vile trickery and deception to turn the Lunaris on her sister Solaris, who became mortal enemies until the end of time. After touching the mirror of delirium and entering a parallel dimension, a strange voice accompanies us. It is obvious that this voice has ill intentions, but it does not reveal who it truly belongs to. But some clues suggest that this voice belongs to Tangmazu, and he is playing another trick to deceive the exile. Even though he is stated to be a god of trickery by many sources, I believe that trickery is simply a tool for him to use, and his true intentions are to spread chaos since he does not respect order. Asmeri were the ancestors of people who founded the Eternal Empire. They, like their neighbors the Val, had their gods, but only one of them is still remembered in Rayclast. His name is Prospero, and he's the god of lost treasures. He was worshipped by ambitious and rich people, and even the Pirandus family recognized him as their deity. The Eternal Empire itself had its gods. Two main gods that were widely worshipped by Imperials, especially in Sarn, were Solaris and Lunaris. They even had their own respective temples that had massive halls, statues, golden furniture and other luxurious items, which further indicates that the Imperials' belief in them was strong. From their name and appearance it is evident that Solaris was the goddess of sun and Lunaris was the goddess of the moon, locked in perpetual fight of night and day because of the trickster god Tengmazu. The Karui gods are numerous and mostly represent the forces of nature. But they had great impact on the history of this world through goodwill or ill intentions. Death is inevitable, and so is Hinikora. The Karui refer to her as the mother of the dead. She is not good or evil, she exists as the force of nature that no one can escape, even gods. Namahu is the goddess of fire in Karui culture. She is worshipped and respected by the Karui since it's the fire that let the humanity conquer the darkness and the creatures that dwell there. It is even said that the fire inside a warrior's chest during the battle is given to him by Namahu. Another god of Karui is Ramako. He is referred to as the father of light. Since the main source of natural light is the sun, it is possible that he is a god of sun in Karui culture. Valako is the god of lightning and ravaging winds and is called the father of the storm by the Karui. 
Even though he does not play a major role in Karui's day-to-day lives, they worship him with great reverence. It is he who allows them safe passage to other lands through sea and if he so wills it, a powerful storm will obliterate any ships that carry the Karui warriors to conquest. Unlike other gods whose powers leave humans in awe or fear, Tawa is a peaceful god of trees, plants and wildlife. He brings beauty to this world and is not bothered by strife or struggle. Just like Tawa, Tasalio is also a peaceful god. He is also known as the father of water and creates and manipulates lakes, rivers and oceans in order for life itself to prosper. The most important and revered god in the Karui culture is Tukohama, the god of war. The entire Karui culture is based around love for war and battle and they have many laws and codes of honor in place in order to keep Tukohama pleased. Death on the battlefield is the greatest honor for the Karui warrior and the greatest warriors are said to be blessed by Tukohama himself. Even though most Kari gods are benign or neutral, there is one god in their culture that represents pure evil and insatiable hunger for destruction and misery. I'm of course talking about Kitava. Kitava is despised and hated by the Kari and their gods for his evil nature, but Kari are not the only ones that suffer from his appetite. After the Kari gods had enough of Kitava's vile nature, they imprisoned him on Oriath, where he slumbered for many centuries. But after certain events caused by actions of a lonely exile, Kitava the god of hunger was awoken, and not long after death and carnage filled the streets of the once prosperous Oriath. Even though Kitava represents pure evil, he is still worshipped by deranged cults who want nothing but death and destruction to envelop the world they themselves live in. This is it for this episode. In my next video, I'll be taking a closer look at Sin and Innocence, the gods of Oriath, talking about their origins and famous deeds. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you would like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. If you would like to leave some feedback or have any ideas for future episodes, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye everyone.